take blue key, you go back to the luxury you know. You take the red key, and you'll never look at luxury the same again. That car sure looks great in the ad, but is that the car you'll get at the dealership? Some things are not what they seem. Advertising has always been a tricky beast, but with a purchase as big as a car, things can get pretty complicated fast. From depicting cars doing things they might not be able to do, complicated financing schemes, to outright cheating scandals, there is a lot to look out for in car advertising. You want a car. Manufacturers want to sell you a car, but they want to sell you their car. The best way to get you into the showroom to buy their car is to advertise their car and make it sound better than any other car you could buy. But how much can you trust these claims? The auto industry has a colorful history with some deceptive practices. So colorful, in fact, that most countries have regulations that make sure they can't lie to you, at least about certain things. Creative calculating of mileage led to the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, to put out a standard calculation for mileage. But even that number is fungible in surprising ways. A number of electric cars have actually lowered their range estimates, including the Porsche Taycan and the Kona EV and its sibling, the Kia Soul all lowered their range estimates. This means that some of those upgrades are really just adjusting the range estimates. This kind of thing is not confined to electric cars and their ranges. During the heyday of the muscle car, American car companies were in a bit of a pinch. On one hand, they had ready and willing customers wanting more power under their right foot. On the other hand, they were afraid that releasing these powerful cars on the streets could end up in a publicity crisis if hot rodders ended up in dangerous crashes racing their powerful cars on the streets. To appease the people concerned about overpowered muscle cars, they released their car with reasonable horsepower numbers. To appease their customers, who wanted as much go fast as they could get, those numbers would be a complete lie. For example, John Wick's favorite ride and the car you definitely should mess with is the Ford Mustang Boss 429. The Boss chassis was designed to take the Mustang road racing in the SCCA Trans Am series, and the 429 cubic inch engine was designed for racing NASCAR. Both series at the time required that some versions of what they raced was available to the public. So they put a race car engine in a different race car chassis, slapped some license plates on it, and called it a 375 HP when in reality it produced closer to 420 HP. This wasn't restricted to American muscle cars of the 60s either. Japanese manufacturers faced the same problem with their sports cars of the 90s and entered into a gentleman's agreement. They all agreed not to produce a car more powerful than 276 HP. This meant a lot of cars from Japan were listed at exactly 276 HP. Of course, most of them produced more than that. In 2005, with the Honda Legend, or as Americans know it, the Acura RL, Honda finally broke the agreement advertising the car at 290 HP. Even today, cars that are supposed to be known for their horsepower have undersold their output. The VW GTI has consistently undersold its performance, presumably to stay in a lower insurance category. Of course, having better range and more power probably doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world, but there have been things that companies have hidden that are not so great. Perhaps the most famous is the Ford Pinto, made to catch up with the changing landscape of the auto market where small fuel-efficient cars were outselling the big American gas guzzlers, in an effort to save weight, the Pinto didn't have enough protection around the rear-mounted gas tank and it was said to be prone to fires and rear-end collisions. Over the years, people have disputed whether the Pinto was fairly judged, but it wasn't the crash test that undid the car as much as what's become known as the Pinto Memo, where it appeared that Ford had decided it was cheaper to settle lawsuits than it would be to recall the Pinto. While this might seem like like ancient history, as recently as last year, Ford was rocked by another leaked memo that revealed that they knew the transmissions in their Fiestas were flawed. Some people never learn. The most notable recent instance of cheating, of course, goes to Volkswagen and their diesel scandal. VW sold their diesels as the clean alternative to gas or hybrids. Unfortunately, they achieved that by programming their cars to cheat during the smog tests. When they detected they were being tested, they would run cleaner, but with less power. When it left the bay, it would run dirty, but with more power. The fallout nearly destroyed the company and has caused them to shift, now committing to selling a million electric cars by 2023. So how are cars advertised these days and what can we look for? 
The reality is, after more than 100 years of development, most cars are essentially the same, especially from manufacturers who share parts across the range, or even with each other, by rebadging cars and selling them as a different car. The other depressing reality is, no matter how exciting your car is, it's on the same road as everyone else, and most of the time, it will be spent wondering if that guy in front of you is really turning right or he's just decided to reserve the option for the next 10 miles. No one wants to sell their car sitting in traffic, so instead, we see the cars living the lives we always wanted them to be. Fast and wild. This means some involving some people whose names you might not know, but you've seen them a lot. Precision drivers. Drivers like Formula D champion and TV host Tanner Faust, or also Formula D champion Rise Millen, who have done the driving in action movies, are also tasked with making it look like driving a Nissan Sentra in the city is an action-packed affair. Jeep taunts their cars as trail-rated by making sure at least one example of their models can navigate the rigorous Rubicon Trail in Northern California, despite most SUV owners never tackling much more than a wet road. Vehicles are sold less than what you might actually do with them, and more what you could do with them. Sometimes what it takes to sit through traffic is thinking that on the weekend you might climb a hill or carve a racetrack, and that makes it okay. One of the ways they make car ownership an adventure is a place called Mount Tamalpais. If the surroundings and car commercials look familiar, it's because they are. Located just north of San Francisco, Mount Tamalpais provides green line two-lane roads with ocean views that have become a go-to for the car makers filming their car commercials. Car classes are another tricky area. Things like sport utility vehicle or crossover are not clearly defined classes as much as they are ways to market the vehicle. Where this becomes problematic is when cars are advertised as best in their classes. As long as you get to decide who is in your class, you can always be the best. The Volkswagen Eurovan was once billed as the largest van of its size. Just let that one sink in for a moment. Another obstacle manufacturers face is having to have their advertising ready for the launch of the car, but the cars aren't often ready until their launch. One of the most frequently used solutions is to use a prototype model with the little tiny note at the bottom of the screen telling us that the product model might be different. There's a company that's created an easier solution to that problem by not using the car at all. Instead, they use a special vehicle called the Blackbird. This is a bare-bones car with a cage and engine, but where the genius comes in is that its wheelbase can adjust. With an array of sensors and cameras around the car, as well as the markers, the Blackbird can be digitally replaced with whatever car you want as the final product. Now the manufacturers have a real location, like a picturesque Northern California mountain complete with car shadows and tire smoke, but the ability to make the car look like whatever they want. So the car you see ripping through Mount Tam might just be in fact a blackbird with a digital disguise. The Ford memos and Volkswagen's diesel cheating scandal have shown that manufacturers risk a lot by withholding from the public. But people don't buy directly from the manufacturers in most cases, but rather through dealerships who have over time gained a reputation for pulling fast ones on buyers. In fact, the used car salesman has become synonymous with someone who would cheat their mother to make a deal. Just like other common deceptive practices, that's led to regulations to keep those places honest. One of the most common practices was to advertise a car at a lower price than it is actually sold for, a practice so common it has a name, the bait and switch. This time, the concerned entity is the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC. In 2015, the FTC challenged Las Vegas-based Planet Nissan and Planet Hyundai for misleading ads that would list a monthly payment as a purchase instead of a lease. But they were in fact lease numbers. Planet Hyundai would offer 50% off without enumerating several requirements necessary to qualify. Like you had to be either in the military or recently graduated with a registered Hyundai or trading in a car. Might as well have advertised it for 50% off for Dave down the street, on a Tuesday, if the car is in the shade. Another practice is to hide options as standard equipment, not disclosing that these add-ons have increased the price of the car. A related practice is to hide fees, dishonestly presenting the amount due at signing than what is actually going to be due. A lot of these are meant to get you on the lot where they can rely on the salesperson to close the deal since you came all the way there intent on buying a car. The Las Vegas dealerships that came under the scrutiny of the FTC after their own sweep of dealerships called Operation Ruse Control. Get it? Ruse? Rhymes with cruise? Ah, you get it. That one sweep resulted in 252 actions against dealerships using deceptive advertising to draw in customers. One of those found in the sweep was dealers offering sale, lease, and payment terms that sound great, but if you look at the small print, the conditions cancel them out, much like Planet Hyundai's 50% off. They also wouldn't reveal important information like fees or signing costs. The best thing that consumers can do to protect themselves is to make sure that they read the entire ad and ask upfront about any fees or additional costs. Also, research the car online first and know what the MSRP or market value going in as well as what is standard and what is an option on the car. 
the FTC has a hotline, 1-800-FTC-HELP, if you feel like the dealership has misrepresented its terms. As to whether you're going to do bootleg reverses downtown or take the Rubicon Trail home, that's sort of up to you. Either way, when you're buying something as expensive or important as a car, it's always important to do your homework beforehand. These are some of the ways that car companies can be less than honest. What do you look out for in advertising? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, be sure to subscribe to The Richest for the latest videos in your inbox.